So in this lecture, we are going to talk about how to localize a, a target node using wireless technology. So these are called localization systems and they have seen a great interest over the past decade. And today they are very pervasive. As an example, if you take a smartphone and uh, use an application such as a Google or an Apple map, it is very likely that it is using uh, one of these localization system, which is GPS that helps you navigate uh, uh, within the city and lets you know your location. So what do we mean by the term localization within the context of this course? It means to be able to figure out a physical coordinate of an electronic device, such as IOT device, drone, or uh, things such as mobile phone. And these physical coordinates that we determine can be either globally aligned with some meaningful system such as GPS, in which case it helps us determine the location information as latitude or longitude readings, or some localization systems may help you determine location with respect to some other fixed reference. As an example, if you are trying to localize a target device within a lecture theater, we might want to localize it with respect to wireless devices in the lecture theater. So there are a number of different uh, modalities and parameters that can help us determine the location information. And localization itself has seen a great deal of research effort over the past decades. And we show some of these modalities on the slide. Uh, in this course, we are only going to study a handful of these modalities and methods. As an example, over coming slides, we're going to look at using receive signal strength indicator or wireless signals to determine the location of a target device. We might also briefly cover angle of arrival or using the angle at which a wireless signal arrives to determine the location of the target device. So one of the most commonly used algorithm or method that is used in localization system is something called trilateration. And this method is used in also GPS systems. And this method can help you localize a target IoT device or a, a node from host or a beacon or anchoring nodes. So how do you estimate the location? You use basic trigonometry to, and use these equations to solve for triangles to estimate the rough location of a target device from these beaconing or anchor nodes. So we show this very rough calculation uh, uh, on how to use trilateration on the slide. So we have a number of different anchor or beaconing nodes and a target node is located at the center. And we draw these circles that eventually help us determine by using basic trigonometry, the location of the target device. So when we are using light trilateration method, how many beaconing or anchor nodes do we require to estimate the location? So for the first question is what are these anchor or beaconing nodes and why do we need for localization? So these are anchor nodes that are, are, that are wireless devices that are sending small packets of data, which we also call beacon to the target device. And the target device use these beacons or small information to estimate its own position. So how many of these anchor or beaconing nodes that we require to localize in two dimension, we need at least three anchor nodes. And to localize in uh, 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 in two dimension, we need at least three anchor nodes, but to localize in three dimensions, we need at least four anchor nodes. And the location and the distribution of these anchor nodes can very greatly affect the accuracy of the localization process. So what are the inputs that are required by the trilateration algorithm? It requires distance of the target device from the anchor nodes. So how do you determine the distance of the IoT device from the anchor node when you only know the, for example, the receives uh, wireless signal strength? So there are several techniques that can enable us to determine the distance of the target node from the uh, anchor nodes. And these includes, for example, using the strength of the signal uh, or using the uh, things like says the time of flight or time of arrival, or you looking at time distance of arrival. And let's look at these techniques in greater detail over the coming slides. So let's first talk about RSSI. 
So this stands for receive signal strength indicator. And earlier we had, for example, looked at freeze propagation equation that help us determine the receive power of a wireless signal. We had seen that the signal strength attenuates as the wireless signal propagates from the transmitter device to the receiver co covering a certain distance. So what are the parameters that can help you determine the read uh, 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 on radio tra uh, transceiver, the strength of the signal that is being received. And this is called RSSI or receive signal strength indicator. And most radio transceivers today allow you to estimate RSSI. And in theory, it varies as an inverse relation to the distance raised to the factor of alpha. And this alpha depends on number of parameters, including the propagation environment, uh, so one common assumption that we see with RSSI systems is that if a device is close to the transmitter, that the RSSI should be the strongest. However, we what we find in reality is that this often is not really the case because of the complex propagation of the radio waves in the real environment. So consequently, one of the major issues with using RSSI for estimating distance or what we call ranging is that the noise of RSSI can be at the order of uh, meters. So you uh, the measurements that you get can be inaccurate. So, uh, so the to just elaborate it further, the path loss of the attenuation in the strength of the wireless signal does not only occur due to distance, but also many other environmental factors uh, that contribute. It can be, for example, the wireless signal can be reflected, reflected from the environment, or other wireless signals may interfere with the signal. Consequently, the RSSI is very noisy and it can be very far, far from what you may estimate. So, for example, we have this graph uh, that... Uh, uh, looks into the uh, how the RSSI varies as you move further from the transmitter. So on the x-axis, we have the distance of the receiver from the transmitting device. And on the y-axis, we have the RSSI estimated to be in dBm. And the solid black curve uh, uh, indicates the, what we estimate the RSSI should be, while the small bubbles are the real world uh, uh, values. And what we find is that the real world values are, they can, they can vary a lot in terms of um, what we estimate uh, uh, the, uh, the, the RSSI to look like at a particular distance away. While we can see that there is a general trend that as you move away from the transmitter, RSI goes down, but the values are clustered uh, uh, in a way that the RSSI can significantly vary even at the same distance. And this is actually what contributes to the low uh, uh, accuracy of RSSI based ranging or estimating distance uh, from the anchor nodes. So to counter this, what are the other ranging methods that we can employ to know the, the, with high accuracy what is the location of the target device from the anchor node? So the first method is something that we call time of flight, which is also sometimes called time of arrival. So this method helps a target node to determine the distance of the target node from the infrastructure anchor, point, uh, anchor node by knowing a number of different uh, parameters. And these are what is the exact location of the infrastructure or the anchor node, which is sending these wireless beacon messages. What is the transmit time of these beacon messages? What is the receive time of the beacon message at the target node? And what is the velocity of the signal that is uh, received? That is, what is the speed at which the wireless signal is propagating? So the time of flight is not only applicable to wireless uh, uh, radio waves, but it is also applicable to, for example, sound signals. And that, that's where the, the signal velocity might vary depending upon the particular signal that you're using. So what kind of uh, in synchronization are we looking at? So this uh, uh, time of flight requires that there is a tight say, time synchronization between the anchor node and the uh, target device. And this is uh, why, we try, because this is because we are also looking into parameters such as transmit and receive time to actually estimate time of flight. So what kind of time synchronizations are we looking at? So. So let's say uh, time of flight can be sort of like applied to different waves and for sound waves, let's say it's propagating in the air and uh, and the radio waves also, of course, are propagating in uh, air. So how, so 
so if you look at basically that uh, that accuracy of clock that is required it is at the order of nanoseconds when you talk about radio waves and it's the order of milliseconds when we talk about uh, sound waves and the, the both the anchor node as well as the target device have to be synchronized with their clock being this accurate for you to be able to reliably use time of flight for being able to estimate distances. And if your clocks are not synchronized, it will contribute to a high error in terms of your estimates on how far the target device is from these anchor nodes. And, and achieving nanosecond level uh, synchronization between the target device and the infrastructure might not be very straightforward and it can be challenging especially because it requires more complexity of the hardware and uh, also which requires in turn, uh, in general, uh, higher uh, power consumption, which is something you want to actually restrict for a, a typical IoT device. So how do we overcome this challenge of requiring very high time synchronization between an anchor node and the target? There is another method that we employ and this is sometimes called time difference of arrival. And this method helps you determine the exact location of the target device by knowing the precise location of anchor nodes or infrastructure. And the time of arrival of wireless signal at two different anchor points uh, can be then used to sort of like estimate the location. So this time of this difference of arrival is based on like you have a target device, a number of anchor nodes that are distributed in the environment. And this uh, target device may be sending a small message, which is then received by a number of these anchor nodes that are distributed in the environment. And by looking at the difference in the arrival of time of this message sent from the target device to the different anchor nodes, you can estimate its uh, location. So this method requires synchronization only between the anchor nodes and not between the target and the uh, anchor node. And this makes it easier for us to apply this method to IoT nodes. So one important variant of time difference of arrival, which you are going to also use in one of the tutorials is uh, when you use two different mediums uh, for uh, 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 in uh, localization. As an example, we look at the system that was developed at MIT called Cricket, which is a localization system. And it has significantly influenced the development of many localization systems over the past two decades. So we show the Cricket node on the with the image on the slide. And it consists of a speaker, microphone, and a radio module uh, integrated in a, in an, uh, in an, uh, on a device. And the Cricket node transmits a radio signal and an audio message with having some delay between the transmission between these two messages. And what this uh, system does is that it uses the difference in the arrival time between the radio and the wireless uh, message to be able to estimate the distance. So as an example, we look at uh, this particular slide. So we have, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the radio message being sent uh, 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 with the delay of T delay uh, uh, from the uh, sound message. And since both of them pro propagate at different rate, they arrive at different time to the node B. And if let's say D is the distance between the two nodes, we can actually uh, estimate time difference between arrival by uh, uh, filling in these values to the equation that is mentioned on the slide. And this can allow us to estimate the distance between the two nodes if we don't know, for example, the distance and if we know the other parameters. And this actually system works very well in a line of sight environment. And it can actually even give you centimeter level of accuracy by actually uh, have implementing the system in the real environment. Of course, but it requires an additional hardware and uh, it also requires a calibration in terms of uh, the nodes for you to achieve this level of accuracy. Finally, while we have talked about estimating distance at the anchor point, you uh, uh, we can also use another parameter instead of distance to estimate distances. And this is to use angle. So typically, if you have an antenna array, uh, you could, or what that means is that you have multiple antennas, you could actually estimate the angle at which these wireless signals arrive to estimate the, uh, the uh, uh, to estimate the distance of the target node from the, uh, the anchor uh, points or the infrastructure. And this is called angle of arrival. And uh, I think the precise details of uh, how to estimate distance from angle of arrival is beyond the 
the scope of this course. But if you're interested, I'll encourage you to read. And it's uh, angle of arrival is also very important because we are going to be uh, seeing this being employed more and more in uh, wireless and IoT devices. And the reason is that the Bluetooth's latest standard actually supports angle of arrival localization. So with this, I will conclude this part of the lecture. Thank you very much.